Well, greetings to each one of you. We are going to be in Joel. Oh, uh, you know, think about the fact that Jesus uh, quoted things from uh, Daniel. Jesus quoted things from Joel. These were real people <laughs> that had real lives uh, hundreds of years prior to Jesus walking on the earth. And they were acknowledged as prophets, and their writings are validated by the person of Jesus Christ. I think that's awesome. I think that's such a great thing to know. I mean, Jesus goes all the way back to Genesis and validates things. Jesus validates so much of the scripture um, just by what he says and the things he quotes. And I just think that's powerful for us to know because there's those of a liberal mindset in their theology that would undermine the veracity of Scripture. And I struggle with that because I believe that the Bible really is, I'm, I struggle with their views of it. I, I find it uh, not good. Uh, they're great minds, but they're not thinking right. Uh, in other words, intellect isn't what it's all about. We need, to, we need to know God, and we need to have faith that God is able to do things. Well, Joel is also quoted, but I want to take something here out of verses because we can only really um, grab a one uh, Devo. So this time through, we're just grabbing uh, chapter 2, verse 25. It says, So I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten the crawling locust, the consuming locust, and the chewing locust, my great army which I sent among you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. What a great word. And my people shall never be put to shame. Then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel. I am the Lord your God, and there is no other. My people shall never be put to shame. Notice that the people would not be put to shame. This is repeated twice. Whenever things are repeated, I always kind of pick up on that, especially in a close proximity. We're going to have some other ones as we go through things out in the future where there's just this, these repeated statements that like, they, 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 if God's taking time to repeat something, it's probably because he wants us to know it. So, you know, when we first come to the Lord, our lives are oftentimes uh, uh, in disarray. There have been things going on where God's allowing things to happen in our lives to get our attention so that we would turn to him. I oftentimes joke, you know, and people that don't know God but know that I know God and their friends and different people I know and I, or people I work with or whatever, and I tell them, well, I'm praying for you, you know, and, and then their, their lives just become difficult, and every time they turn around, they're bumping into a Christian, and they're trying to, you know, they just can't escape it, and they'll come to me and say, would you please stop praying for me? And I say, I just can't, you know. Uh, but because, you see, this is the thing. God oftentimes will allow things, just like he did with each of us, to become difficult. Don't interfere with that. Just keep praying for them. They, they would see God for who he is and see the world and the enemy for who they are. And so here we see that when we first come back to the Lord, basically God has a way of making up for lost time. God has a way of restoring. He's a restorative creating God. He restores. He, he takes out, you know, those those uh, damaged, damaged planks on your on your deck, by your in your backyard at your house. You know he he takes those deck boards out and replaces them with new boards. He restores it so it's usable again. And so this is what he's saying: I will restore to you the years that the swarming locust has eaten. In other words, uh, that that if the destroying fa factors that had happened, God's going rest to restore it back to you. I think that's a, a wonderful thing to know about God's nature. Because sometimes you feel like, oh, I've lost out on so much. Don't worry about that. God has a way of taking care of it and covering you for it. And then they say that ultimately when you are walking with him again, you're going to be satisfied with plenty. And you're going to praise the name of the Lord your God who has dealt wondrously with you. I like that, wondrously with you. And you shall be my people and never be put to shame. And I like this, that then we will know that we know that he is our God. You know, that's all that this is all about. It's just knowing him and knowing that he is our God. And the thought that he knows us and that he has us safely tucked in his hand is a wonderful truth. Enjoy that today. God bless you.